Suicide tastes like salt water. The bitterness of an unrelenting depression stinging your eyes open, twisted reality in the form of an incoming shipwreck, brass silence tearing at family photos. Attempted suicide. A household swallowing its own tongue, crewmen skirting around each other, fearing the job isn't quite done. Depression is sewn to the underside of 19% of people's rib cages. My friend lives in the dim lighting of a hospital, and the doctors keep saying that they can board up the breaches, fix the splinters, as if the flesh wounds of this mighty vessel were the only cause of her ability to capsize, and I have offered an ear, a rock-guarded mouthful of advice lined with precautions. She says she's finally feeling better, drawing back a cigarette normal. She knows I can never relate to the inadequate grip of a life raft. I am too prideful in my own life to take it so willfully. I want to tell her how the missionaries float to my doorstep and seeking fellowship they knock but my good Christian shepherds them to the bridgeway as if to say this broken mass doesn't need fixing I feel their waterlogged footsteps being replaced by a friend's negligence to address a brewing storm you know how it digs a hole in the heart how no one is safe when suicide is the second leading cause in death in college students and I am searching for the hearse I've swam endlessly in every photo album and documented on her phone is a timeline of her self-annihilation and I fear the Polaroid snapshot end of it. You know, most surviving suicide victims say that if someone had just listened, say that they didn't want to die, but sometimes it feels like the only choice. So if someone had just listened, they would patch up their battered holes, stare them right in the ocean, yelling everything out. You know, maybe they wouldn't have let the ocean in. Chewing them up and spitting out all their shipwreckedness, maybe? Maybe she would fix her condemned life before the final breach. Till the salt water, the tears would not swallow her today.